Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here, and welcome to episode 29. Today, we are continuing where we left off. Poor Burberry Kerman is stranded here up in an orbit around the moon, and the Kerbals back at Mission Control need to desperately get a vessel up here to save Burberry. Lucky our engineers have a vessel on standby for just this type of mission. So here we have a very small, very cheap rocket. The main booster stage is made up of two FLT 800 fuel tanks with four small solid rocket boosters around the edge. Up on top we have a fairing that's coming out protecting our main payload which we're not going to give away quite yet. So our vessel, which is called Hashtag Save Burberry, is only around 17,000 in funds, a very cheap rocket, so off we launch. Releasing the launch clamps there, and off we go. This vessel has a start thrust to weight ratio of 2.0, so it's got plenty of power off the launch pad here. In fact, we've actually limited down to around 30% our solid rocket boosters, just so that we can make them last a lot longer during the ascent. As we ascend, you'll probably notice that we've got quite a few new visual enhancements to the game. We are still running stock parts, so you can still build this vessel just using stock parts, but the mods that I've got installed here today, which we haven't shown before, are the ones essentially using the stock visual enhancements mods. Just going to ditch those solid rocket boosters there now. They pretty much just come back in and implode on each other in a wonderful way. So yes, you can see there those wonderful cloud effects that you wouldn't normally have in the stock game, along with many other great lighting effects going on there. Our apoapsis here now getting up there above the 70 kilometers needed to get out of the atmosphere, so we're just going to turn our craft horizontal, completely horizontal. Obviously, again, we've timed our launch just perfectly so that we can ensure that we're pointing direct at the moon. Ditching our fairings and that booster stage there before we send our stage 2 off. Our stage 2 there consisting simply of a single FLT 400 fuel tank with a Terrier engine. And you can see there over the horizon rises our moon which is obviously our destination. Two solar panels out there which is going to give us power for our journey. Switching into map view, you can see the aurora there over the poles of Kerbin, some more of those beautiful visual effects that I'm talking about. And switching over here to focus on the moon so that we can figure out where we're going to get our intercept and start planning our maneuvers to come and pick up Burberry. There we go there, we've got an intercept, so we're just going to continue bringing this in until we basically reach the orbit lines there that uh, Burberry is orbiting around. We will need to adjust our inclination, so we're going to time warp in here to our descending node. And again, you can see some more visual effects, the way the sun looks, the lights around Kerbin's dark side. Even the way you lose sight of the stars as you stare directly towards the sun or something else bright. Look at that, that is just beautiful. As our time warp completes here, we can start turning our vessel in towards our normal marker so that we can start doing our correction to adjust our inclination. We're out by a few degrees here. So there we go there, we've got our inclination perfectly matched there to Burberry's inclination. The next thing we need to do here, obviously, is reduce our velocity so that we can fall into an orbit and then, obviously, make an encounter to pick up Burberry Kerman. So we'll head in towards our periapsis marker there. Pointing towards our retrograde marker, we're going to start doing a retrograde burn here just until we obtain an orbit around the moon. And there we go there, so we've got an orbit now. Now what we can do is just keep doing a slow retrograde burn here and we can follow those pink intersect markers around until we get our perfect encounter. And there we go there. That's pretty much right now. We can just time warp around now until we're getting very close to that intersect marker where we can do our more finer corrections to basically match the target velocity of Burberry. Using target mode and turning retrograde on the nav ball will wipe off that relative velocity just as Burberry starts passing by. And then we'll point towards the target, do another very small burn just so that we can close that remaining distance. In we come. 
And there we go. We're actually only around now 90 meters distance from Burberry. From here on, we can actually control Burberry and bring him in to hop on our little rescue vessel here. Burberry, I'm sure, very happy to see this rescue vessel here. Just using very small thrusts on his EVA pack just to come up here to intercept with our vessel. And coming up very close here and we'll right click the seat in a minute and board, there we go. So Burberry Kerman here sitting in our prototype rescue vessel, let's hope this damn thing works. <laughs> it's basically just a glider sitting on top of a heat shield so let's hope that we have a very very good re-entry without getting off center. Just doing a very quick inclination adjustment here just to make sure that when we leave the moon's sphere of influence that we will do so along the equatorial plane just so that we can then re-enter on Kerbin's equatorial plane. Setting up our prograde burn there to exit the moon's sphere of influence and we'll bring our periapsis around Kerbin right down almost touching the atmosphere there. Just turning the camera there to get a better view at that we'll bring our periapsis right down to around 50 kilometers and time warping now into Kerbin with again those beautiful new stock visual enhancement effects. Now you'll see here we're not going to be able to come in over the top of the Kerbal Space Center on re-entry so we don't want that. You can see there the signal lines pointing out where the Kerbal Space Center is. What we'll do first is actually do an initial pass just to reduce a lot of our velocity and we don't even need our heat shield initially to do this. We can reduce a lot of our velocity just using our Terrier engine as our heat shield for this first pass. We're not hitting the atmosphere too hard yet. So reducing a few hundred meters per second off our orbit there, uh, we do actually have a little bit of fuel left so we can just do a slight burn here to reduce our velocity just a little more. We'll just leave just a tiny little bit in the tank just in case we need it. That'll do there and we'll actually now come around for our second pass. So yes, if you do have a machine that supports some of these extra little nice mods, I do highly recommend them. They are really nice. They make the game feel so much better. So you should be able to see now we've got our Kerbal Space Center positioned quite nicely as we come in to re-enter. What we'll actually do is just use the last tiny bit of fuel we've got here, burning retrograde, just before we ditch our second stage. So we'll actually ditch that second stage out to the side just so that if we come in and re-enter it doesn't come back and hit us back in the face. There we go. Now what I've noticed is I need to come back in and right click and control from here on our little probe core otherwise our orientation's all wacko. So now that we're facing in the right direction we can actually come in making sure that our heat shield is perfectly centered towards that retrograde marker. That's very important because if we even deviate just a little bit we're going to be totally screwed. With the magic of video editing we'll just skip over the boring part passing through the upper atmosphere. And as we come in now, you'll see that plasma starting to flicker over the heat shield there. In fact, I've actually ended up, interestingly, with just a little bit of lift that I wasn't expecting there. So we're actually not descending down into the atmosphere as fast as I thought we would have been. The trick is going to be whether we can re-enter in the lower part of the atmosphere without hurting poor Burberry. Now this re-entry vessel that we've built here is very very simple, it's only got a single heat shield at the front followed by a small decoupler that is then attached to the rest of our little glider vessel. There is absolutely no propellant in this thing, there is no thrust available in this thing. We've just got a small inline reaction wheel with a few batteries that are going to allow our reaction wheel to basically tilt our vessel in all the directions we need as we're descending. Still coming in a little quick here. We're actually going to overshoot the runway. Hopefully we'll slow down enough as we pass over the top. Let's see. The one thing that I will say though is that our heat shield has worked perfectly. We've had very minimal heating issues on the way down. We'll just ditch that heat shield now that we've finished that main part of the re-entry. And hopefully now we can use our new little glider to come down in a controlled manner 
I've got no idea whether the four basic fins that are attached to this thing are going to give us enough control to actually come in and hopefully touch down without a parachute. We'll have to see how we go with that. Hmm. In fact, as I recall the stats for the basic fin, I think the lift generated was 0.12, so we've got four of those. Doesn't seem like a real lot of lift. That being said though, we actually don't have a great deal of weight, so maybe a very small amount of lift will be enough to give us enough control to basically come in and reduce our speed, so let's see how we go. Tilting the vessel down there pointing towards the runway is giving us quite a lot of horizontal velocity, so this is great news, great news for Burberry. As we come right down here near the runway, we're actually losing a lot of velocity. We still need some velocity, otherwise it's just going to stall and fall out of the sky. So we're keeping our very high angle of attack here as we come down. We're at around 55 meters per second here still. Pointing back up towards the horizon now to get a bit more speed. Coming right down here now, I can't quite recall how fast you need to hit with a Kerbal to kill him. I think it's somewhere between 15 and 20 meters per second, so we've got to wipe at least that much off before we hit the ground. Burberry Kerman looking very, very, very concerned there. I don't blame him. I'm concerned too. Oh, and... Oh, oh. <laughs> He's alive and very relieved. Look at that smile. <laughs> we'll leave the seat there and uh, we'll just stroll back to the Kerbal Space Center. <laughs> no welcoming party. No one here to give him a lift. What a jib. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. Please do take a second to give it a like, a thumbs up. All your support helps a great deal. If you have any questions for me, please do whack them down in the comments below. And thanks, of course, very much to all of you that have subscribed. And for those that haven't yet, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. Oh, goodness. Come on. This is like a total brown trousers moment. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Touchdown at 36 minutes and 45 seconds.